Hallelujah. Praise God. Saints, today I want to welcome everybody to Magnify Him Ministries. Amen. I'm Pastor E, and I'm so glad to be here with you. I would like you to please stand with your Bible in your hand, and you're going to find us today in the book of John. The book of John. John chapter 15. And I want to talk about a friend. A friend. A friend. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, pastor is about to preach a friend. Watch this. Verse 10 of John 15. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right. Okay, family. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be filled. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, here's the joy. This is my commandment. Watch this. That you love one another. Did you know love is a commandment? I don't care who you are. Everybody need love. Watch this. He said that I have loved you. That's a whole lot of love. <laughs> Verse 13. Greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life. For his friends. Mm. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. Look at your neighbor and say friend. For all things that I have heard of my father I have made known to you. Verse 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whosoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You see that? Watch this, verse 17. These things I commanded you that you love one another. Let us hold our Bibles in the air. I can have what the word says. I can have and I can do whatever the words say. I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as I go before God's throne of undeserved kindness and prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as I'm humble here before you, God, you know I need you now in this hour, in this moment. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name that you use me to give you all the glory. Hide me behind the cross of Jesus Christ. And I pray in Jesus' name that someone here will be delivered, set free. That your word will encourage your heart that they'll never be the same in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God the glory one more time for his word, amen. Verse 10 here says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. When we deal with the word command, we get ready for some serious demands. But this word means to make the cross the object of your faith. It shows action and the actions of a friend. He's not talking about just 
the 11 disciples here, but a relationship that we have with him. See, as a friend, we don't see obedience as friendship. That's not the way we look at friendship. But you have to realize something. When you love somebody or a child loves you, they obey what you tell them to do. Am I right? Because that obedience is love. If you tell me to do something and I do it, you know that I love you. Because I don't have to do it. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. So love and obedience and keeping the commandments is love. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You don't start out friends with your children. I got children. You got children. I don't start out being a friend with my child. When I tell you to do something, that's what I mean. I want you to do. If I tell you to come in, sit down, eat your dinner, I want you to come in, wash your hands, sit down at the table. We're about to eat dinner. If I tell you to clean your room, listen, if I tell you to clean your room, I want you to clean your room. Whatever I tell you to do, that's what I want you to do. Now, when we got children, your children are not your friends. They don't start out being friends. Because if you start out, being friends with your children, what you're going to have is a lot of disobedient children. So you start out doing what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it. Now later on when you're grown and you got your own family and you listen, put bread on your own table, then we can be friends. But before that, I want you to do exactly what I tell you to do. So friend relationships don't start out when a child is little. A friend relationship starts out when you get older, you're more mature, you know how to act, you know what I expect. Then, and only then, can we be friends. Because children need to obey. Am I right about that? Glory to God. Now, back in these days, a disciple was a servant. A master was on a whole different level than a slave. Can I get a witness? You have to realize something that a disciple was a student. They weren't on the same level as being a friend. That means that if I was back in this day and I had a whole lot of people that was working for me, listen, they are not my friends. They are servants. And back in that day, it was even okay to have some slaves. Because a slave lived a good life. Don't forget Philemon. Amen. So everybody wasn't bad. Everybody wasn't mean. Everybody wasn't nasty. Amen. Some people could live a good life. But one thing I want you to realize something. That they did not call the slaves their friend. Now Jesus has took us to a whole nother level. Whole nother level. Because he says that we, you and I, no matter who you are in this church, that you can be his friend. That means that the relationship that you're going to have is going to be the same kind of relationship. Look what it says here that he has with his father. Saints, let me tell you something that's revolutionizing because of the simple fact that I know how mean, I know how wicked, I know how wrong that I have been. And let me tell you something, there was a time in my life where you don't know if you want to be my friend. Because I wasn't Mr. Nice Guy. But I'm here to tell you now that God will take your hard heart, no matter how hard it is, and turn it around and make you love everybody. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. And for him to say that I can be his friend, that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot, y'all. That's a whole lot. Because let me tell you something, in life, you're not going to have many friends. Let me tell you something that I learned about friends. See, those that are far off can't really hurt you. But your friends that get in close, they know how to hurt you. And there are times when you can live your life and think you're all that, you're 100, you're down like four flat tires, but they car turn the other way on you. Can I get a witness? See, let, 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 let me talk to y'all for a minute. Let me talk to y'all for a minute. See, you got to realize something. 
as long as we doing everything the way I like, I'm happy. But when things change and things don't go like I like, we got a problem. And you got to realize something. When you go in one direction and you're all by yourself, you ain't got to worry about a U-turn. But when you start letting people in your life, you better be careful. Amen. And I realized something, that some people, they be with you, pretend to be a friend, and then when they get in good, they really show you who they are because people don't contend to do what they really don't mean. You could be a friend today, and we could be opposites tomorrow. Somebody give God the praise if you hear what I'm saying. See, the thing good about staying in your own lane is you don't have much traffic. As long as you're in your lane, baby, you ain't got much traffic. But when you start letting traffic come on somebody, hallelujah, sooner or later, it's going to be some confusion. Sooner or later, it's going to be some problems. Sooner or later, things ain't going to go like I like. And baby, sooner or later, you might not like me. Because you don't want to deal with me when I'm in confusion. Oh, I'm talking this too much now. Wait a minute. See, the reason why the Bible said that vengeance belongs to God is because you can't handle my vengeance. <laughs> Anybody hear me? They can't handle your vengeance. If you really cut that vengeance loose, they can't handle it. Are you listening to me? That's the reason why God said vengeance is mine. See, God give you a reason to turn it loose so you don't wind up in jail. Come on, somebody. So you don't wind up dead. Come on, somebody. So you don't wind up killing somebody and be on the 6 o'clock news. So God said, this will belong to me. I got somewhere to put it so I don't have to go cray-cray on you. Clap your hands if you hear what I'm saying. Praise God. Thank God. Somebody raise their hands and say, I'm glad I've been changed. Hallelujah. Amen. It might not be popular, but I guarantee it's real. <laughs> Hallelujah. So obedience is love. And Matthew 22, 35 to 38 lets us know that when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, listen, it's the greatest of all commandments. This is the reason why he tells us that you got to love him because love ain't nothing but obedience. It's the reason why I come home at night. It's the reason why I do what I'm supposed to do. Because I love God. I know how to do wrong. How many of y'all can be real? You're good at doing wrong. But doing right is not so easy. Give God the praise and be real in here. So God say, I'm going to show you how to get my love. I'm going to show you how to love me. See, that's the problem. We want to love people, but we don't ask them how they want to be loved. Mm -mm -mm. Praise God. Because God's going to show you how to love him. He said, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and all your spirit. I realized something about love. I done had love walk away from me too many times. Anybody in here ever felt that? They say they love you. Where they at now? Some of y'all don't like me already. But it's all right. Here's the point. Friendship is sharing joy. Look at verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be full. The point of friendship is sharing joy. See, I don't know how you think you got a friendship and joy with somebody when all y'all talk about is negative things. I need somebody to encourage, baby, if all you want to do is talk about what you ain't got and what you ain't never had and what somebody doing to you and Lord, I don't like them because you want me not to like them, but I'm going to judge them on my own. I'm not going to let you tell me how to feel about people because the issue might not be the person. The issue just might be you. Oh, yeah, we in there now. Praise God. So I'm not going to let you dictate my friends. Listen, I learned in life, you choose.
choose your friends and don't let your friends choose you. Come on, somebody. Give God the praise in here. Watch this. It's getting to know some of y'all. Joy is what our friendship is supposed to be about. You want to share the sunrise with somebody. And I know it sounds mushy, but I got mushy when I got older. Y'all pray for me. And the joy of the Lord is a relationship that I want to let the world know that I got. And I told to the world because I found a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I realized something, even in this Bible right here, nowhere in the Old Testament is only one man that was called a friend. Imagine that. Whole Old Testament, Genesis, all the way to Malachi, one man, one man, that was Abraham. What some of y'all Bible scholars say, well, Moses was his friend. No, he said he spoke to Moses as a man speak to a friend. He didn't call Moses a friend. Abraham was the only one in the whole Old Testament who was God's friend. But everybody your friend. That's how you are. Everybody your friend. You love everybody. Everybody, everybody ain't your friend. Stop thinking everybody's your friend. Because see, when they know you're silly like that, they know they can play you. Learn to draw a line. You don't let everybody in. Especially when you don't know what they're coming in for. Come down. Where y'all at? Why are you all up on me? Wait a minute. Do I know you? <laughs> everybody not your friend. The Bible said a friend of the world is an enemy of God. A friend of the world is an enemy with God. I got upset with somebody here not long ago. Had checked myself. I realized they ain't saved what I expect them to do. <laughs> you get mad at people that don't have Jesus. Let me tell you something. When I wasn't saved, I did just what an unsaved person do. I didn't know how to do nothing else. Praise God. Be honest. Let's not come to church and lie. See, that's the problem. We got churches that all they do is lie. They don't never tell you the truth. It takes a minute for us to realize that out of all the people in the Old Testament, only one man was called God's friend. But here I am in the New Testament, and you mean to tell me that all of y'all sitting in here is jacked up as some of us are, that we're friends of God? You better clap your hands and give God the glory because you know you don't deserve to be his friend. But I'm going to be his friend anyway. Somebody say hallelujah. If we say I can be his friend, I'm going to be a friend of God. Because ain't no friendship like the friendship of God. Can I get a witness? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I found a friend that's always there, that never puts me down, that never thinks less of me. I found somebody that already died for me. Let me tell you something. For somebody to die for you, do you realize he died for you. See, let me tell you something. See, the message of the ministries have gotten so much more prosperity. We don't forgot what means the most. He died. Now, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Because I got women in here that can tell you more about dying than some of y'all men. Because when they had that baby, they say that's the closest you'll ever be to death. See, they know about that. Because they got up off the table and he smacked them on the back and said, eh. So they know something. But let me tell you something. When you grow up in the street, like I did, and you see people die every day. I remember the first revelation I got of death. I was walking up 52nd Street in West Philly 
on my way to Harry's store to get me a pack of Nihilators. And we had a guy. His name was Karate. He's one of the boys from the hood. And I seen a crowd around the little vestibule. And I walked by. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was stabbed so many times they couldn't count the stab wounds. And I realized something. Jesus died willingly. He wasn't involved in no gang banging. He wasn't involved in no hurting nobody. He died with love for us, y'all. Do you know how many times that I've been in a situation where I thought somebody was really with me, but when it went down, they ran off and left me. And I realized no matter how tough anybody is, it'd be hard for them to die for me. Now, but he came down from glory and he said, you know what? I'm going to die for you so you can have the opportunity to be in heaven with me. You ain't going to make it unless you go through Jesus. And I don't know what you might be hung up on today, but I want you to realize something. Is it worth missing eternity with God? I remember I used to sit in the house and look out the back window and I watched the car sit out there waiting to get a shot at me every day. Sit in the window and look. I never go out the back because I know that would be the end. So when I left, always left right. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But I realized something. Death is quick. Just like that. Somebody be here today. Go on tomorrow. You're gambling with the only thing in your life that means anything. Really. And that's your soul. Now maybe you don't mind going to hell. Because if that's where you want to be, you wouldn't be sitting here. And no matter where you're at or what you're going through, you realize deep down inside something is telling you even while I'm talking right now. He love you. Okay, where you at? He love you, man. He love you, sister. That's why he died for you. He's saying, have you forgotten me? Have you forgotten what he did? You must have forgotten. God, I ain't seen you in a long time. Where you been? I remember this woman, she said, she was an atheist. And her daughter died. Y'all listen to Pastor, because listen what I'm saying. Her daughter died. And she shook her fist up in heaven. She said, God, why have you done this to me? Why are you so mad at me? And she heard a voice from heaven. See, I'm not mad at you because this is the first time you talked to me. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on now. She had a voice from heaven and said, this is the first time that you talked to me. I'm not mad at you. I love you. And that is why This sermon is tearing me up so much because I realize all he want to do is be your friend. God is so in love with you. He's in love with y'all. But you got to realize what God's love looks like. And I want to tell you children, I want to tell y'all what God's love looks like. I'm going to show you what God's love looked like. Looked like the cross. That's
That's what his love looked like. Looks like the cross. And it was ugly. It was bloody. It was pain. The worst death that anybody could die. They took the beating. They tore all his hair out of his face. Nails in his feet. Nails in his hands. Dragging a wooden cross. He dragged it so far he couldn't drag it no more. The brother had to come and help him. And when he went up on that cross, even the ones that put him there, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let me tell you something. You can walk out this church. You can go anywhere you want. But I'm going to show you what God love looked like. And I don't want you to ever forget it. It looks like the cross. The cross. The cross. See, the cross changed my life, y'all. The cross has done everything for me. Because that's God's symbol of love. And his love is unlimited. And his hands are out to everyone. And I can't love everybody void of God's moral standards. Even though I understand how great life is, we all go wrong. I don't never want you to think that one sin is bigger than some other sin because all sin is transgression against God. Listen, you might be able to see Jojo's sin. You might be able to see somebody else's sin. But let me tell you something. Your sin is just as important. Somebody say amen. So no matter where you're at, what you're going through, wrong is wrong. It don't make a difference what the wrong is. And let me tell you what I learned about Jesus Christ. See, the reason why you need to get back with God, start coming to church. Start making your mind up. I'm going a different direction than what I'm going. Make up your mind. And let me tell you why it's so important. Because I learned something about Jesus Christ that I don't, it is absolutely amazing to me. He's the only one that went to the cross, right? And when you give everything, you don't have nothing else to give. When you give everything, you don't have nothing else to give. What else do he have to give for you? Huh? What else? What else? What do you tell me what you want? What do you want? When you give yourself He done gave you everything. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with Jesus? What are you gonna do with it? You just gonna act like the cross never happened and just go through life, do like you wanna do, live like you wanna live, say what you wanna say. But then when you die, he said, every knee shall bow, every mouth shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Don't wait till you die to have to bow your knee. Why don't you get it together now? Listen, you got time. There are people in my life that I thought would still be here. They dead and gone. Call me 4.30 in the morning. Pastor, your mama dead. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can preach to everybody else. But I never had the chance to make it right with my mama. Do you know how that feels? It hurts. It hurts me. But I know one thing. There's a lot of things in life that I ain't done right. Do y'all hear me? But the one thing that I got right, I gave my life to Christ. And no matter what I lose, I'm still a winner. Come on, somebody. No matter what I lose, somebody give God the praise of here. No matter what you lose, baby, you can still be a winner. It's not late. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. You wonder, do he want you? Let me tell you something.
there's room at the cross for everybody sitting in here today. There's room at the cross for you. He wants you. He died for you. He loves you. Don't let the devil make you think that God don't want you. That's a lie. Why would he die if he didn't want you? The point that I want to talk to you about today is do you want him? That's what you need to ask yourself. Do you want him? Listen, can you take a chance on being on a little church like this with somebody that love God enough to believe in you? Somebody love you enough to tell you the truth. Somebody love you enough to care for you. Somebody love you enough that you can call 24-7. Somebody love you enough to listen, love your children, love your family. Because let me tell you something. The one that never got love has learned how to love everybody. I can't give enough love. I can't. I'm so happy. Happy, Lord. Every day I'm happy because I know where I come from. And I know where I've been. But give God the praise to somebody in here know where you're going. Come on. Come on, it ain't about where I pass. My past is about my future. And your future can begin today. When you turn everything over to God. He said that he has called you friends. See, the servant was never called a friend. But he calls you a friend. And the Bible says, in verse 16, ye have not chosen me. See, you might be sitting here today thinking that you got the opportunity to choose him. No, baby. He chose you. He chose you. That is a revelation. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, I'm going to give it to you. Let me tell you something. Everything you need, everything you dreamed of is wrapped something in Romans 5 verse 6 and 7. Y'all deal with me for a minute. Give me a second. I want to show you something. Show you something. Show you something. I'm going to mess you up. Romans 5 verse 6 and 8. Romans 5 verse 6 and 8. YouTube Romans 5 verse 6 and 8. See because I thought I had to get it together. You know I thought I had to get it right. I thought I had to clean up my act. I thought all that. But let me show you what it says. When Jesus died for you. Somebody say, neighbor, he about to show us when Jesus died for you. He said, for when we were yet without strength. Mm. In due time. Y'all see that? Christ died for the what? ungodly. Verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Watch this. But God commanded his love toward us. Somebody say us. And that while we were yet what? Sinners. He died for you. Now let me tell you something. If that ain't good news, I don't know what is. Because no matter how bad or where you at here today, God said, listen, when you were yet a sinner, that's when I died for you. I didn't wait till you got it together. I didn't wait till you got to church. I didn't wait till you died every eye. Wait till you crossed every tree. I died for you. Amen. When you was in the street, when you was no good, when you listen, he said, I you when you at your worst. At your worst, Dan. Oh, I know you're looking good now. 
I know you done come a long way, baby. But Jesus said, I died for you when you were still a sinner. And he reminds us what's most important in our Christian faith. Right here in verse 17, he said, these things I commanded you that you love one another. See, I don't understand when we in church and we act like we're better than somebody else. That's why I started today, told everybody, look around. You're looking at the most jacked up, toe up people in the world sitting right in there. You're looking for a perfect church. You're never going to find it. But what you will find is the people on the potter's wheel. Isn't that what my son was talking about? That listen, you ain't all that. Nobody is. But he's still shaping you. He's still making you. See, let me tell you something. Y'all might be glad that you done made it where you made it. But let me tell you something. I'm glad I'm just still on the wheel, see. Because I ain't there yet. I still got some bumps and some bruises that I need him to straighten out for me. Amen. Listen, I realize that I ain't all that. But thank God he's still working with me. Somebody give God the praise. I can still be worked with. Hallelujah, praise God. As long as he's working with me, I know one of these days I'm going to be the finished product and I'm going to come out shining like the sun. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the praise. Go tell somebody he's working on me. He's working on me. We need to have some realistic expectations. Even when we wasn't right, we ain't got it right. In verse 17, I'm closing, gentlemen. He said, love always, amen. Love always. When you don't feel like loving, love anyhow. When they don't treat you right, love anyhow. When things ain't going right, love anyhow. When they make you mad, love them anyhow. Don't let them see your face. Smile and love them anyway. I learned to walk away from people that ain't loving me right. And let me tell you why. Because they don't know who they messing with. You messing with a child of God. And when you come after me, God is coming after you. I ain't got to fight you. I ain't got to argue. All I got to do is give it to my friend. <laughs> You know, how many of y'all had a big brother, a big sister? Let me see your hands of you. You know, I never forget, I was up at the school one day. And they told me, they said, uh, what's well, after school? You're new here. And they knew I was from West Philly. I was in Germantown. So they said, after school, we're going to tear you all to pieces soon you get out of school. So you know I did? I made a phone call. How many of y'all can know that call? <laughs> huh? Hey, what going on, little Emmett? I said, man, these jokers talking about a whole gang going to jump me after school. They said, what? So he called one of my other uncles. You know, we got a construction company in Philly. Evidently, they must not have known what Dixon and Good was. So after school, he said, uh, I said, let me call again. Go there to the pay phone. You know, they ain't had cell phone back that day. I ain't coming outside. <laughs> See, y'all thought I was going to be all bad and tough. I ain't stupid. <laughs> and I, I said, yo, y'all out there? <laughs> I said, yeah, boy, come on out. <laughs> I came out. And I seen the construction van outside. <laughs> I see my uncle and them outside. And they walking around with the hammers. <laughs> they walking around with the chisels. What's up? I, and then all of a sudden, you know I break bad. Come on now. What? You want some of this? He said, which one of them? I said, that one right there. Man, I ain't say nothing to him, man. I ain't say nothing to him. And the next day they said, man, don't mess with that fool. He had grown men up here looking at him. I forgot I was only in the sixth grade. <laughs> huh? But see, I realized something. 
I got a friend that can fight my battles for me. I got a big brother, and his name is Jesus. I got a big brother, and his name is Jesus. And everybody, their arms are too short to box with God. See, what you want to be real with you, you want them on your team. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You want them on your team. You want them in your life. Listen, you need to be somewhere where you can learn how to get it. Because once you got it, your life will never be the same. So when the devil starts messing with me, I still remember my little dance. You don't want none of this. Because I realized something. I'm blessed by the best. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Let me see you get on your feet 